Have you ever wondered why Mariah's hair is brown and not blonde? Have you ever wondered why Maddie's eyes are brown and not blue? Have you ever wondered why Rebecca's hair is curly and not straight? Have you ever wondered why Sophie can roll her tongue and some people can't? We are going to answer these questions and many more in our seminar on Genetics. genetics. For thousands of years, farmers and herders have been breeding their plants and animals to try to produce bigger, stronger, and hardier hybrids. Since the laws of inheritance were unknown, it was somewhat of a hit or miss process. Well, that didn't work! <laughs> a few people tried to figure out how genetics worked, but it wasn't until Gregor Mendel, a little-known European monk, conducted lengthy research using pea plants that the true process of heredity was discovered. Even though Mendel's research was on plants, the principles he discovered also applied to humans and animals. Mandel made his discovery about heredity by selective crossbreeding of 28,000 common pea plants between the years 1856 and 1863. Here we have a pea, two pea plants, one with a purple flower and one with a white flower. If I cross-pollinate them according to the blending theory, I should get a plant that has both purple and white flowers. Let's see what happens. <gasps> Through this experiment, Mendel proved the blending theory wrong. Because the offspring either had white or purple flowers, not white and purple flowers, depending on which trait was dominant. In 1866, Mendel published his observations, but they went unrecognized until the 1900s, when his theory was verified by two scientists because of the invention of stronger microscopes. Oh my gosh, wow, did you guys get the new 4S microscope from Pear? You bet we did. Did you get the white model or the black? We got the white, it looks so much cooler. Yeah, and now we can see what really happens when cells divide. Awesome! That's a plus. Yeah. Gregor Mendel is now known as the father of modern genetics. Uno, dos, tres, action! Whoa! <laughs> Maddie! 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 <laughs> what model did you get, the black or the white? It looks white to me! Before I get into the rest of the seminar, I'm going to go over a few of the terms that you will hear during our presentation. An allele is one part of a pair of genes occupying a specific spot on a chromosome that controls the same trait. Basically, they code for a specific trait, such as eye color, height, and so on. And there are two alleles per gene pair. A genotype is a set of alleles that determines the expression of a particular characteristic. A phenotype is the outward expression of a particular trait. So the characteristic you can see, such as eye color, height, hair color, and so on. A dominant trait is a trait that wins over all the other traits. When it comes to determining eye color, brown always wins over green and blue. A recessive trait is a trait that is less likely to express itself in the outward appearance of a person or organism. However, it can be expressed when two recessive alleles are paired during reproduction. A heterozygote is a nucleus, cell, or organism possessing two different alleles for a particular gene. For example, a person having both a dominant brown eye trait and a recessive blue eyed trait paired together. A homozygote is a nucleus, cell, or organism where the alleles for a particular gene on each chromosome are identical. For example, a person having two dominant brown-eyed traits paired together. 
A trait is a genetically determined characteristic or condition. And a gene is a segment of DNA that is responsible for the physical and inheritable characteristics of an organism. If we were in a classroom setting right now, we would be doing a little experiment. So I'm just going to take the results from a previous one I've done. There are a total of 52 students, 6 with attached earlobes, 46 with detached earlobes, so 12% with attached and 88% with detached. Because there are 88%, we can obviously see that detached earlobes are the dominant trait. When scientists are talking about dominant and recessive traits, they pick a letter. In this instance, we've used the letter E. To represent a dominant trait, they use an uppercase letter, and to represent a recessive trait, they use a lowercase letter. Some terms that scientists will use are homozygous and heterozygous. Heterozygous means two that are different, and homozygous means two that are the same. Since genes come in pairs of two alleles, you inherit one allele from your mother and one allele from your father. In the first example, we have two dominant traits, and that would be homozygous because they are both the same. In the second example, we have two recessive traits. That would still be homozygous because they are the same. In the last example, we have one dominant trait and one recessive trait. That would be heterozygous because they are different. During the early 20th century, Reginald Punnett developed the Punnett Square, a simple mathematical formula used to predict the probability of inheriting a trait. If you look at the example, the parent on the top has one dominant and one recessive allele, and the parent along the left side has two dominant alleles. By crossing the pairs into the box, you can see that all of the offspring will show the dominant trait, but there is a 50% chance that they will be carrying the recessive allele. In my family, both of my parents are right-handed, but I am left-handed. Tracing it back another generation, I found out that my mom's side, that on my mom's side, both of her parents are right-handed, but because they have a left-handed child, they both have to be carrying the recessive, in this case left, allele. We found out, because I am left-handed, my mom is carrying the recessive allele, even though she is right-handed. On my dad's side, my grandpa is left-handed and my grandma is right-handed, but because they have two left-handed children, my grandma had to be carrying the recessive allele as well. Like I said before, my, both of my parents are right-handed, but they are carrying the recessive allele, which made it a 25% chance of having a left-handed child. All three of my sisters are right-handed, but we won't know whether they are carrying the recessive allele unless it is expressed in their offspring. One of the ways that we are going to learn about genetics is through fast plants. The reasons why we are using fast plants is because they grow fast, becoming mature in 28 days. They will help us learn about genetics and different traits. We can breed them to look at all the generations, and we can cross-pollinate them to get different variations of fast plants. During this project, we will be cross-pollinating to find what the dominant traits are. The traits we will be looking for are short, tall, hairy, non-hairy, basically main characteristics of plants. Once the flowers bloom, we will pollinate. We will pass the pollen from flower to flower. Pollen that lands on the tip of another flower's pistil grows a tube down into the pistil. Inside that tube, the new seeds will grow. Once they grow, we will take them off and dry them, and then we can replant. The following is the process for our Fast Plants project. First we had an idea, and then we talked with Mr. Tweed so we could expand and finalize our project idea. Then we ordered our fast plants, and while we were waiting for them to arrive, we set up our planting stations. Once we had the seeds, we planted them. Then we watered them, fertilized them, and monitored the plants until they were ready to be pollinated. Then we pollinated the flowers for specific traits, keeping detailed records about which plants we cross-pollinated. Then we collected the seeds, once they were dried, and then we planted them to start a new generation to see which traits express themselves. In the next step of our project, we're going to take a survey of the whole school to discover which trait are most dominant within our school community. We are also going to look at the genetic history within each of the team members' family. Genetics are not only important to code for what you look like and what you can physically do, like Sophie being able to roll her tongue, like Rebecca having curly hair, like Maddie having brown eyes, like Mariah having brown hair, but also your personality, determining who you are. Any questions?